Namaste. Yes, you are right. In today's topic, we will learn the proper way of Kapalbhati. We will learn the what is a Kapalbhati Pranayama or Kriya. We will also learn that beginner, intermediate and advanced, what will be the ratio of the breath, what will be the rhythm of the breath and how much forcefully you should do and how much you should not do. This is more important. So we will also learn in this video that how much time, how much round you should do Kapalbhati Pranayam. Let's start. So before we begin the technique, we must need to understand the proper philosophy of Kapalbhati. Understand here, Kapalbhati is a Kriya of Shat Karma. There are three types of Kapalbhati. The first one, Shitakram Kapalbhati. The second one, Vatakram Kapalbhati. And the third one is Vyutakram Kapalvati. So the Vatakram Kapalvati, Vata means Vayu, Vayu means wind, breath. So this is the Vatakram Kapalvati which you use in Pranayama. It is a part of Kriya, but why it says, why it called Pranayama? Because it is a Vatakram Kapalvati. Means the purification practice where we are using Vata, the Vayu. And because of that, it is a part of Pranayama. But the whole techniques of Kapalbhati is what? It is a part of Shat Karma, the cleansing. So this is the one part, one philosophy of Kapalbhati. The second philosophy. Kapalbhati, when we do, it is a purification practice. There are three types of practice of Pranayama. What is a Prana? Ayama means liberation of Prana. But before you liberate, before you expand the Prana, you need to purify the Pranic body. So there are three categories, three practices in pranayama we should do. The first one is purification. The second one is channelizing. And the third one is harmonizing. So Kapalbhati is purification, the initial part of this pranayama technique. And only when you use Vatakram Kapalbhati, which is with a breath, not any other Kapalbhati technique. There are more two. But you are using Vatakram Kapalbhati where you are using the breath. So this is a basic another philosophy of Kapalbhati. Now the third very important part of Kapalbhati you must know which part of the body are you using in Kapalbhati technique, Kapalbhati Kriya. So which part of the body you are using? There are many vayus in our body. So five are major vayus. The Prana vayu, Samana vayu and Apana vayu. Apana vayu you are using in this. Apana vayu means this is a navel, below the navel, that area you are using in Kapalbhati and that's the reason when you push in Kapalbhati like this, <laughs> there's a very important thing you should know that you cannot just push randomly. You must know which area has to push, you must know which vayu you are using, which prana you are using and you must know that how much forcefully it should be pushed. This is very, very important. So one now, when it comes to Kapalbhati, understand the contraindication. First of all, this is a Kriya. So you will not do in the evening. All the Kriya, whatever yogic techniques, yoga has, everything happens with empty stomach, the fresh stomach, the awake stomach, which is in the morning. So first of all, you need to make sure that Kapalbhati Kriya, you are not doing in afternoon. You are not doing in night, you are only doing in morning and that is early morning. So that is a Kriya, so you are doing early morning. That is a Vatakram, so you are using the breath. Another part, when you do Kapalabhati Pranayam, first of all, those who have any kind of acidic issue, any kind of indigestion issue, don't do. Any kind of diarrhea problem, don't do right now. If you have any kind of a headache, migraine, right now, if you have asthma, don't do this epilepsy don't do right now and once you do you need to understand that you should be completely fresh with calm mind not in depression not in anxiety not in anger you should be calm because it is a fire practice it generates the fire of the body the fire means this samana vayu is a fire so when you work with apana below the navel it pushed the samana to awake and that's how the kapalvati affect the brain and that's why you might feel a little bit calmness in the brain because the same fire 
goes from navel to the top of the head. So this you need to understand. Now another part, when it comes to the sitting position, this is very important. If you don't know how to sit in Kapalbhati, you will not be able to use the right Vayu, which I just mentioned earlier, Apana Vayu. You will use a Samana Vayu. Right now I am sitting in Padmasana. You can see that. But I have this booster, this cushion. So those who cannot sit in Padmasana, they will always sit with something so that your buttocks are a little bit higher. Why? Because if I will not sit in Padmasana, I will not sit in this cushion. My buttocks will roll down, my spine will roll, and then what will happen? My apana will be compressed. And that's the reason many of us do the mistake. We use samana vayu into kapalbhati, which is apana, which is a purification vayu. Apana is a purification vayu. Kapalbhati is a purification practice. You should use the apana. I will recommend you, don't do kapalbhati if you are not sitting with higher buttocks. Understand here. Kapalbhati is active exhalation. When you push like this, and that is you are pushing below the navel. So you are pushing below the navel forcefully inside. And that is with one breath you are using with forceful exhale. And inhalation is happening by itself. It's like a vacuum. You just push, air comes sucked automatically inside. So in Kapalabhati, air is sucked. You are not doing for this. You are just doing exhalation. And you need to pay attention only forceful exhalation, which should be rhythmically. One two three rhythmically how much you have to do doesn't matter you should not to do 100 if you're not doing correct many time many videos maybe you saw that many people they do 100 they do 200 no don't do this way you will burn yourself you should start gradually repetitions rhythm simits systematically this is important if you are a beginner two second one exhale understand Two second, one exhale. If you are a beginner, so if I am doing Kapalbhati, it will be like this. Two second, one exhale. Second, intermediate. If you are a little advanced, if you are doing Kapalbhati, uh, minimum three months, six months, then you can do one second, one exhale. So it will be like this. This is for intermediate people. Now, the student who is regular, who is one year, two year regular practicing Kapalabhati can do two breaths, two exhale in one second. It will be like this. Now, another part. When you exhale, give time to your body to inhale. Means you are not doing it, but you are not doing fast that your belly is not even going inside. Most important is that your belly is sucked inside. This is power. This is how it should be. You should not to do that much fast that your belly became hard. Your belly should be soft. It should not be. See my hands. Now my hand became very active. And now. So your belly muscle should be like this. Very soft. And that's why I, I told you. Beginner, intermediate, advanced how they should do. How much you should do? Now you will do only beginner when it's a beginner, 11 round you start. One breath in two seconds. So it will be like this. This will be. Did you see my body? I'm not changing. I'm not moving. And one more important thing. Did you notice that? My nose, the flap of the nose, many people when they do Kapalbhati see the nose become very soft. Remember always one very secret technique to do nice Kapalbhati. So the wind, the air when it passes out, when it comes out from the body, from the wind pipe it will come directly from the nose out. So always the nose should be very open. See my nose. I am just broadening the nose. It's like this. So my nose is more open, not natural. My nose is not resting now. My nose is active. And now I will do Kapalbhati Pranayam forcefully. It will be. And then if you do this way, you are not using any skin, any face muscle. You are just directly working with your lungs cleansing. You are working with your fire awakening. You are not disturbing the area here. So that all the fire goes directly from the center body 
to the brain, not to the face, not to the ears, not to the eyes, not to the nose. You will not feel any burning sensation any in this area. Directly it will reach to the head. And then it will become cleansing of the skull, which is called the cleaning skull pranayam, which is called shining skull pranayam. Kapal means skull and this purification called bhati, shining. And that's how it will purify the mind. So if you have a thoughts, over thoughts, it is very beneficial in this. If you have any kind of problem with digestive system, metabolic problem, the food is not digestion properly, Kapal Bhati is the best Kriya. If you want to do meditation, Kapal Bhati is the best preparation for meditation because it cleans the thought, it gives you peace mind. If you are having some problem with insomnia, morning time do Kapal Bhati every day, start doing this, mind will become silence and then it will help you in this part also. There are many benefits, huge benefit. Kapal Bhati Pranayam improve the digestive system. Kapal Bhati Pranayam improve the function of the fire which is keeping you warm inside, which is giving you the life inside because the prana expand in Kapal Bhati. Apana Vayu becomes stronger. So all the excretory system Kriya becomes very easy. So all the stool, all the toxins goes out from the body very easily if you do Kapal Bhati regular. Kapal Bhati strengthen the lungs. So if you are feeling that lungs doesn't have that ability to hold the oxygen, Kapal Bhati helps because it improves the oxygen. Because you are forcefully exhaling, removing the carbon dioxide out. So it improves the function of the oxygen. Now let's try the technique. I will rest my hands here. So my chest is broad. I am sitting straight. I am opening my chest. But I am not pushing too much. Just I am sitting straight. Resting my hands. Relaxing my shoulder. Opening my nose. Open. Like this. I will show you the first way. The first five round. I will do beginner. Second five round. I will do intermediate, third five round. I will do advanced one, just with closed eyes. So eyes are closed. First beginner one. Intermediate. Advanced. And then relax for 30 seconds in this. Observe the whole sensation throughout the body. Observe the brain, how much calm you feel. Observe the silence. And then just softly relax and open the eyes. Did you see the different, different areas? How, how I was breathing? The first beginner, then intermediate, then advanced. You need to choose which one is more for you because it doesn't matter fast. You need to see your strength. You need to see your body, how much it gives benefit to you. I will recommend you to do the beginner one. I still do right now also, beginning. I will merge. I merge all the time, but mostly I do the beginning so that it can use, I can use my whole belly to prepare for the further pranayama practices. Because in beginning, you push the belly nicely. So you are working with proper function with the belly. You are working with apana properly. And knees, remember, it should be lower than the buttocks. Try this, get the benefit, share this video and share this technique to all your friends and family. I'll see you next video. Namaste.